God, which is in you. Paul said, I don't want you to get confused about which gift you're stirring up. He said, listen here, I don't need you to stir up your, your calling. I don't need you to stir up your calling. Your calling is straight, but I need you. So Paul said, I got to explain to you so you won't be confused. He said, so so here it is, verse number, verse, verse, verse number seven. He said, for God has not given us. All right, so I want you to know what it is that you're stirring up. He said, but before you can stir up, you got to get the wrong thing out. Right. Yeah, when you crack an egg, it is often that that, that we're not gifted in, in culinary arts. And oftentimes what we'll do as we're cracking an egg is that we'll leave a part of the shell in there. Before you can scramble those eggs, you dare not scramble the egg with the shell in there. Brothers and sisters, maybe it is you can't have your spiritual scrambled eggs. It's because you got too many shells in there. Maybe it is God hadn't manifest what he wants to manifest in your life. It's because you got all the wrong stuff in the mix. He said before you can mix up God's stuff, you got to replace it with the devil's stuff. Uh, come on now, you got to replace the devil's stuff. Get the devil. So look at the ones that you got to kick the devil out. He said, he said I want to remind you of something. God has not given us a spirit of fear. You see, brothers and sisters, God has given us things that will complement our calling. But if we don't be careful, we will start accepting things that complicate our calling instead of complementing our calling. He said, Timothy, there's a great work ahead of you, but in this season of your life, you ain't got time for complications. Uh, I, I dare you to look at somebody and say, I ain't got time for no more complications. I ain't got time to keep prove, uh, proving to you that God has a calling on my life. I'm not going to spend the rest of my life trying to convince you to love me. I ain't going to try to get you uh, to approve of me. You are a complication. Can I prophesy over your life tonight? God in this season, in the next 30 days, uh, is getting ready to rid you of every complication uh, to your calling. Okay. I wish I had some help up in yeah. here. Maybe that wasn't the word that you yeah. wanted. Uh, but will you just prophesy to your neighbor since they don't want to talk to me tonight? Okay. I want you to tell your neighbor, say neighbor. your calling is fear. How many opportunities have you missed because of your fear? How many good relationships have you turned down because of your fear? How, how, how many opportunities for advancement have you missed because of your fear? Fear will always complicate your calling. I can very much remember when I was stepping into pastoral ministry. I was I was uh, 18 years old. I was going on 19 and 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 and, and I, I just couldn't see how I was going to make this thing work. Freshman in college, enjoying the experience and, and all of a sudden I get the call to pastor a ministry. God, I didn't think that it was time for this. I know there's some of you that's running and trying to get any church you can get, but I, I wasn't running for no church. Serious, uh, the pastoral ministry was. And let me pause here and let you know that if God didn't call you to something, uh, you better quickly run away from it uh, because it can kill you if you weren't called for it. Y'all missed it. Y'all missed it. I, I, said, I said it could kill you if you weren't called for it. Shut up. 
some of you are walking dead men. You've been trying to walk in a calling. God ain't calling. I remind you to stir up the gift of God. Yes, sir. Which is in you. Get fear out. But here are three things that are about to complement and not complicate your calling. Num number one, number one, here's the first compliment to your calling, power. Somebody shout power. power. You know, there are many, and the church is struggling severely from people who are called, here it is, but do not have power. People who can rightfully preach, but do not have power. Worship leaders that can sing, but do not have power. Brothers and sisters, when power gets on your calling, now, that is what destroys the yoke. I, I learned, I learned, I learned that my hooping and hollering ain't gonna destroy the yoke. Uh, yes, 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 me rustling uh, through all of the words in the English language and using this and intellectual gifts and seminary training would not destroy yokes, but only the power of God. God can turn a crack at it, uh, hallelujah, into a crazy praise. Oh, Only God's uh, yeah. power can turn a prostitute uh, into a prophetess. Uh, only the power of God uh, can make you stop shacking. Uh, only the power of God uh, can make you walk right and talk right. Uh, the calling ain't enough. Uh, church in Acts chapter number one he said stay here until you are endued with power and there's some of you you heard the call of God but you ain't stay with God long enough for him to put power on you but can you just put your hand on your neighbor and tell him say Same people that will hate on you will be the same. 
so long, you don't love it anymore. Some of you folk that done you so bad, you don't even want to sing no more. Some of you folk that done you in so much, you don't even want to preach no more. You don't even want to serve no more. Look at your neighbor and say, no more wishy-washy. He said, no more wavering. You are tossed to and fro, but you can't do nothing with a made-up mind. There's some of you that's going to leave this building tonight with one word. I've got a made-up mind.
yourself like Timothy. He said, there's no more reason to doubt yourself. Whatever you need, you've got it in you. Brothers and sisters, if you believe God spoke to you tonight, this word was specifically for you. Will you lift your hands and tell God thank you? Thank you, Lord. Sometimes we don't need to hear a new word. Sometimes, like Timothy, we need a reminder. I told you this one time, but I want to put it back on your mind. As you leave this conference, let no more of your time be spent on what folk are saying about you. But keep your mind in you. Look somebody and say it's in me, it's in me, it's in me. I'm not giving any more attention to what they say. Oh yeah. But I do as the Hebrew writers say looking unto Jesus the author and the finisher of life. If you are here tonight and you say I do not 
I know Jesus. I've never accepted him as my Lord and as my Savior. I want to give it my life. With every person still remaining standing, Father, we thank you for this word tonight. And we declare, Father, that if there be one who does not know you, that they'll come now in the name of Jesus. If there's someone here today who does not have a church home or covered over their life, let them come today. In Jesus' name. If you are here and you need to be saved, you've never accepted him as your Lord and Savior, I want you to come tonight. 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 Yeah. If you're here tonight and you say, Pastor, I'm saved. I'm in a church, but I just need the strength of God to come back in me and me. I want you to lift your hands all over this room. I've been frustrated. I've been crying. I've been worried. I've been stressing. But, but, but I believe that the power.